We've updated the custom menu element in the Thrive Architect plugin for WordPress. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the basic functionality of the menu element, how you can create a menu layout that works in a mobile responsive way. So it will work the way you want on any screen size. And then I'm going to show you some of the advanced customization you can do to, for example, create a menu where every menu item has a different icon. Hello, I'm Shane Malach from thrivethemes.com and let's get started right away. Here is a demo page where I will drop in a menu. I'll open our elements panel, and just search for menu. That's usually the fastest way to find an element. And I'll start by dropping this in next to my logo in the header. Now, right away you can see that I have a choice between two different menu sources. I can use a custom menu or I can use an existing WordPress menu. I'll choose the WordPress menu here and this will show me the menus I've already created. That's in WordPress admin under appearance and menus is where you can create these. So I'll choose this. And the next step is to pick a template. We have several templates with different styles and some of them work for dark backgrounds. Some of them work for light backgrounds and all of them are fully customizable. So let's just go with the default one here to get started. And here is our menu. Now, like I showed you, this is a WordPress menu. And if you want to change the menu items that are shown here, you can find a link here that will take you to the WordPress backend where you can do that. You also can use a custom menu and you can change that right away. So that's the same choice as you have when you drop a new menu item. You can also choose that for an existing menu. I can switch this to custom and this will give me these placeholder navigation links. So the difference here is that I can edit this menu right here. So I can open this and I can see the menu tree. And here I can do things like rename the menu items, give them URLs, choose the link properties and so on. And I can rearrange menu items. I can nest menu items to make multi-level menus and so on. So the advantage here is that you can use your existing WordPress menus if you already have them. But if you want to make a specific menu, for one specific page, you don't have to go into the WordPress backend and build the menu and then insert it on the front end. You can just create whatever menu items you need, whatever links you need right on the page. That's why we have two different options for how to put together these menu items. Next up, let me show you how to make some layout changes to create a typical menu layout. So right here, we have a typical kind of header menu layout where we have a logo on one side and the menu on the other. There are a couple of changes we would want to make here. One is that we want to probably right align these menu items. So I'll go into layout and position and right align them. Another thing is that some things here are controlled by the menu itself and some things are controlled by the layout. So when I dropped this menu item next to the logo, it created a 50-50 column layout. If I have more menu items, it will quickly not fit into this space anymore. This can easily be solved by changing the proportions of this column layout right here. Next up, we can see that it takes up quite a lot of space. And for this, I wanna go onto the columns. So the columns container, take a look at layout and position right here. And here I can see there's some default padding on the inside that I'm going to remove so that the header has more of the kind of right size that I'm looking for. I also have some excess space around my logo image here that I'm also going to remove. Now, it doesn't look very nice anymore. It doesn't look properly aligned anymore. Once again, I'll do this on the columns container because here I can set a vertical alignment and I can set that to be center aligned. So this will make sure that even if my logo image is taller than my menu items or whatever, it will always be nicely center aligned. Now that I have this looking the way I want on my large screen, next step is to look at the responsive sizes. So I'll switch this to tablet size and your menu will automatically switch to a mobile menu item and a mobile icon on smaller sizes. When I select this, you can choose to switch this. So if I want to show the full menu on the tablet, I can choose to do that. But usually there's just not enough space and usually this is a better choice. Similarly, you can go to the full screen and you can make an icon for your menu, which you can also preview what it looks like when it opens. So if you want to have like a very minimal menu where the items only show on click, you can have that across all screen sizes. So let's go back to our tablet size. This basically looks fine. Then finally, let's go to our smallest screen size. And here, 
again, we have a layout problem because usually when there isn't a lot of screen space, we will wrap columns, so we'll stack columns on top of each other. But here that doesn't really work. So once again, I'll choose the columns container and here I will untick wrap columns. So now I have them in one line. Because I resized the columns before, it doesn't look so nice, so I'll basically move this back again. And just as a reminder, the way this works in Thrive Architect is that any change, any style change you make will apply to the current screen size and smaller screen sizes. So I can have different sizes, different column sizes, different styles on different screen sizes simply by editing what I see on the current screen size. So right now what we have is on the desktop screen size, we have a certain layout with the full menu visible and then on the smaller screens, we have a different layout with the menu icon visible. So those are some of the basic features and the basic layout options you have. Now let's go into some of the more advanced functions. For this, I'm gonna drop in another menu. I'll put it down here and I'll choose one of the other menu styles. So I'm using one of the dark menu styles so that we have another example. And one of the most important things about the customization is that we use group editing. So a menu item, when you click on a menu item, you can see that it's in a group with the other menu items, except that there's one exception. As we can see here, we have three normal menu items and one kind of button style highlighted menu item. And that one has been removed from the group. So here's what we can do. Let's just reattach this to the group right here. And we can do some basic edits on a menu item. So for example, in typography, if I wanna change the text size, that will apply to all the menu items that are linked in a group. And we can use group editing to make some really cool changes. For example, in the whole group, I wanna add an icon. So I click on show icon and I choose an icon. Let's say we take this smiley face right here. And now all of the menu items have this smiley face. What I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna give it a color. Let's say we make this light red. So now I have an icon showing on each menu item, but I don't actually want the same icon on each menu item. So let's go in and select the second menu item. We'll unlink it from the group and choose a different icon. I'll also change the color. Let's make this one light green. And then I will relink it to the group. And I'll show you in a second why I do this. Let's do the same thing for the third menu item. I'll relink this to the group as well. And then finally on the final one, I'll unlink this, remove the icon and relink it. Now here's why I relinked all the menu items. For example, if I choose this grouped menu item, I can change the icon size and this will change the size across all of them. This is something they have in common, why they can still keep the distinct icon and color. If I make a change such as the color, then it will affect all of them in the group at once again. And of course you can change anything you see in a menu with our usual approach of click to edit. So if I want to change the highlight color here. I will unlink this again and I would change that to my brand color, something like this. And the same goes for drop down items. So if you want to change the font size or color or whatever, you can simply open the drop down, click on the thing you want to edit and make your changes. You also have several options such as in the main option, you can choose a hover effect. So you can have hover effects that appear on hover like this. And you can also change this for the mobile version of a menu. So right here, you can see what it looks like when it opens and closes. You can also choose in what way you want the mobile menus to appear. So for example, if I click on this one and I choose right now it's on drop down, so it opens like a drop down, but I can also choose to make it appear as a cover coming in from the side. So you have control over not just what the individual items look like, but also how they appear and disappear. So that is a tour of the updates and the customizability of the custom menu element in Thrive Architect. If you have any questions or feedback about what you saw here, please feel free to leave a comment below. Thank you.